that's one, two, three, four. That's 495 pounds. No belt, no straps, nothing. I'd probably do 450 for reps right now because, like I said, I'm, I'm smaller. And I'll be getting a little, I'm getting smaller as the as it goes on. What does this have to do with your education? Does it equal your income? Your experience does. If I said to you before showing you that video, hey, I could deadlift 500 pounds, right? Some would be like, yeah, maybe you can. Some people are like, whatever. But I right, we go to the gym. I get down, yoke it up. Oh, I can squat 500 pounds. I show it to you, then it's like, boom, it's done. One of the big things that has happened that has really hurt a lot of people is people are working on getting edu education credentials, such as a degree, a master's degree, a PhD. That's the big problem. They can't do the work. I have a friend who is a recruiter. He has shown me resumes, people's qualifications, and the type of jobs that they've been getting. I wasn't shocked at all. There are people out there with master's degrees making eight fifty per hour, and are glad to have it. The reason I gave you the whole thing with uh, the me lifting weights is, if you can show somebody for real, for real, that you can do something, you can get some money. Real easy. It's real easy when you can show somebody that you can do something, you really can get the money. So what's happening is there are many people who are credentialing up. Uh, there are many people who are reading books. There are many people uh, going back to school and getting all this stuff. When it comes to actually being able to do it, they can't. So if you want to make some money, like, I mean, anything, Facebook, become really, really good at Facebook. Become the Facebook savant. Instagram, become really, really good at Instagram. Instagram savant, YouTube savant. Anything that you become where you can go out and easily, as I demonstrated to you, that I can live for, you know, 500 pounds. If you can go out and demonstrate that kind of ability, you will get paid. Education is part of the experience. So the education is included in the experience, but education is not the experience. Uh, there are people here who are brilliant taking tests, but if they had to go out and actually do that stuff, and that's one of the things about being in the military, we had this thing called the practical exam, because my MOS was 92 Bravo, medical laboratory technician. And during school, we had these tests called crucial. If you didn't pass that test, we cycled you as a 91 alpha down the hill. This this girl was in love with her name was Cruz. Oh my gosh, she was delicious. But she was dumb. She was just dumb. She didn't last a week. Down the hill, TA50, BDUs. <laughs> she was down there. Um, <laughs> it's just she couldn't hack the work. Uh, Nina, I'm taking courses to enhance my knowledge, but also get some credits. So all this time I send research in business, I feel like I should at least have some credits toward a degree. All right. Newman. I'm going to go Newman. I'm going to call you Newman. If I got a client, I'm going to tell you part of her story. She's 26, 26, 27, something like that. And she's built a $2 million business from scratch. Now, here's the rub. She's been hustling for 10 years. She actually said the time she went to school, she felt it slowed her hustle down. She was making 50 Gs a year at 17 years old, I believe. There's education and there's experience, but the better education comes from the experience because like right now, uh, I'm working on reformatting my squad, which means that I'm trying to be more flexible. I'm trying to, you know, I'm actually doing ass to the ground squats right now, which means I've lightened up the weight. I'm working on stretching. I'm not doing the deadlift. I'm actually doing stiff legged deadlifts. It's a whole different thing. But see, if I didn't have any experience, I would not know how to do that. I could read about it. I could watch YouTube videos. But until I get my ass in that gym, to my hands touch that bar, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> Newman, start building the business today. Start product, service, whatever. Whatever you can get your hands on, and start selling and making some money. I've seen your page. Uh, I think, and it's just as you would do well selling those dolls you like to post. They're really distinctive, and I can tell you from my eBay and Amazon and storage auction days that people will pay a lot of money for a doll. I mean, a lot. Shocking amount. You go on this channel and you look up at Barbie's My Favorite Chick. That was Mattel's Barbie. I got a 1954, 1955 
Barbie with uh, Easter Parade costume. Google it. It'll blow your mind how much people are paying for those dolls. You get paid for what you do, not what you know. Josh Barr. Find out who makes those dolls because you have an innate passion for them. You appreciate the beauty and you go out and find a community of people such as yourself who like it. That's way more money than you think. Um, remember Marie Osmond dolls fortune. Yep. G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. What you got to do is get practical experience and like um, 30 days, 2,500. My original course, my best course to date. So in my mind, it forces you to get practical experience. It forces you to go out and do stuff. Now, I could have made a really pretty course and I could have had all of this theory and technical stuff and didn't require you to do stuff. And I could have made more money. It would have been beautific. It would have looked really good. But I want people to be successful. And I know in my little heart of hearts, in my little Santa heart, that if you don't go out and do the work, you're not going to be successful. You can have the best tools in the world. You can have um, money in the bank. You're not going to be successful unless you do the work. Up gyms without even knowing to do what you do best. LOL. Apex. That's funny. What's up, DB Blades? Now, DB Blades is, um, what are you, 22 now? He start, he make he he makes handcrafted knives and he's in down under. He's in Australia. And he sells most of his knives, what, in the UK and the US. And he is and he advertises on Instagram mostly, and I think YouTube, but makes most of his money from Instagram. I think the last time we talked. Cash, man, salute to the type of self help you give on this on this channel. Well, thanks for watching. Let's see, good lord, there's more people here. No, I, I really thought it'd be 10 people. How does one get practical um experience? One, like we're having this conversation on my Facebook page today about I was talking to someone and he knew I was a writer, I was at the party and he knew I was a writer and he was just like, well, to write a good book takes years and years of experience. He knew he was talking to, right? And uh, I'm just like, my Amazon page. Oh, okay, okay, but oh, you're self-published and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just sitting there like, fool, I know the publishing industry. I was just sitting there and I gave him irrefutable proof because see, I knew that going just there, I wasn't going to win. And I said, hold on. Fahrenheit 451. All right, I'm going to show this to you. Just had to make sure I got it. Man, y'all coming in here. Let's see. What's up, Phil Moore? Henry Ford in business, whether you think you can or you can't, you can't. You're right. Thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably the reason so few people engage in it. Keith, grinding on Christmas. Actually, I'm not, have, I'm not really grinding. I'm having fun. Uh, small engine repair guy, thank you for all you do for the live broadcast, my friends. Thanks for watching. Uh, Triumph just came back from work and saw you were live, had to tune in. All right, so all right, I'm gonna give you the breakdown here. So we will go here and then we'll take you into my world. I'll explain some stuff to you how I come to know this stuff. All right, as a kid, I was a big, big reader, right? And I, I knew about this long before this conversation. Ray Bradbury wrote a lot of science fiction stuff. I mean, he just was very prolific. Now, the story is he wrote Fahrenheit 451 in nine days on a typewriter, on a typewriter. That's beast mode, right? And this book has been in print for 63, 64 years. And then I presented this to Mr. Blah, 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 you know, because I knew what he was going to do. He's like, oh, you're self-published. And, you know, those are your numbers. And then I showed him. Then all of a sudden, he just got quiet. He got silence. He got real quiet. And he refused to accept the fact that this book was written extremely fast and it's been selling for 60-some years. Now, how did I know this stuff? And, you know, see, let's go to make sure. I have it correctly. So let's come out here and oh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, this has been very, very deep. I don't <laughs> really, what the hell was that about? All right, we will not be doing Amazon. I'll just tell you, it's published 1953. It's a good book, it's a good book. So let's pop out there and I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I know this stuff. Okay. If you're writing the book, right? If you do 250 words per day, seven days a week, that's 90,000 words in a year. We're talking about unless you were just really, really slow, 
five to 10 minutes, maybe 15 at most if you're really slow. So 15 minutes a day for 365 days. It's not a hell of a lot of commitment. Now, if you quadruple the output to a thousand words a day, you will do a 90,000 word book three months. And if you go monster and you do 2,000 words a day, you do it in six weeks. So writing a book, big book isn't so much about sweating and cutting open your, your, your veins and bleeding all over the page. It's not about that. It's about sitting your ass in the chair and writing every day. That's really what it's about. <laughs> That's it. I've written uh, over 30 books. This is the truth. This is not, it's not, it's not mythical. It's, it's just you sitting down and whether you feel like writing or not, you write. Now, that's where your education comes from in the experience. That's why when I hear this stuff about people writing and stuff, I'm like, bullshit. And when they go ahead and I'm like, well, do you know, right? And I'm like, pull out my credentials, right? And then all of a sudden they get quiet because I don't look like a writer. I look like I should be someone's bodyguard. I've heard that. It's pretty interesting. Everybody wants to do drop shipping because it cuts out the hard parts of fulfillment. Fulfillment is shipping. Fulfillment is packaging. Fulfillment is customer service. There's not just you ship the package. You ship the package. You put a tracking number on it. If you're really classy, you follow up with the shipping. You have questionnaires. There's all kinds of stuff. But there's many different segments of fulfillment. Now, people like, I don't want to do that because fulfillment is expensive. You have to have a place to do the fulfillment. You have to have a place to receive trucks who are at dock height, you know, because if you receive a shipping freightment from a 53 foot truck and you don't have a dock, then you manually have to pull that puppy off. Or if you've got a forklift in the parking lot, you pull it off and the forklift moves it into the warehouse. So, You've got to be prepared to fulfill. And that's why so many people are you know, really, really enthralled with drop shipping, the perfect business model. They're really enthralled with these things. But see, you miss out. Now, let me be clear. You can lose your ass by starting a business and investing in all that stuff. Be real clear about that. But you will also learn more than if you don't do this stuff. Experience. Because if I wanted to be a shipping manager, of big products. I could do that. I mean, it's not in the plans, but it's better to have more options than you need than to not have the options you need, if you feel me. So I learned a lot about shipping and I learned a lot about how to ship big stuff. I've learned how to import stuff. And this is not the, you know, I couldn't do this stuff out of my house, but I know how to do it. And in an experience is money. And this is one of the things that really limits many people. They're uh, looking for the easy way out. They're looking for stuff that isn't too hard. They don't want to lose any money. And this is something that's really amazing. The people who don't want to lose money are the biggest non-believers of building a business. I've noticed that this parallel has happened. Uh, the folks who are really not about building businesses, for some reason, loathe to spend any money. If it can't be free or cheap or super easy, there's something wrong. It's pretty interesting. Is not being what people expect super superpower at times? Absolutely. I can make all kinds of bets. One of the things I used to do when I was so inclined was like, if you can guess what I do for a living, I will pay for your dinner. Shit, I'll pay for dinner at everybody at this table. Bodyguard? Cop? Jim? No one. I did it for like four or five years. No one ever guessed. Not one person. All right, see, that's what I like about these live streams because people be giving each other like these digital dabs. Because see, uh, one of the reasons, because people want me to do shows, like if you go onto the front of the channel and look up Badass Hustlers, you'll see his, you'll see him because you know he, he walks through everything he does. And what I found, it was just hard to find so many people who were really doing it that I could verify. And I mean, it became a job within itself, searching for people to interview. And I was like, okay, is this really what I want to do? Is this what I want to turn this channel into? Because it was going to become, it was going to come one of those things, either I was going to do that or I was going to do this. So that's why I let it go. But uh, DB was an excellent experience. Um, Diana, is that why they call it processing and not handling anymore? Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, here's another thing that you would know if you actually did your own shipping. 
Well, actually, it doesn't work anyway. It used to work. Let me be clear about that. Let's say you back in the day you saw the information infomercials. Shipping the handling was nineteen ninety five. Actual cost of shipping that product was like maybe three or four bucks. Maybe most of their profit in the shipping, but due to efficiency and everybody talking, you know, you can't do that. Anymore. Well, actually, they still do. When you see those infomercials, they still do. Shipping's usually like nineteen ninety five, and the cost of the item is ten bucks. That seems to work on television. That does not work online. <laughs> People are like whoa, whoa, whoa. Shipping's more than the cost of the item. Mm -mm, I can't do that. Eddie Mo experiences power. Yes, it is. <laughs> I am rewarding my hard work this year with my favorite ride, 2005, 2008 Mustang. Have fun with business. Congratulations. Hey, what's up, Chris Monroe? Happy holidays to you, Douglas. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, it's that time of year where they're going to start talking about everybody that passed, you know, it'll be Prince and other people. And I don't, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, I was thinking about my partner who passed in 2011. And I was out somewhere and someone said something that she used to say and then just smile because I don't know. I, I'm looking at it like this. I'm thankful to have had that kind of friendship versus mourning the loss of it because it's still with me. And I don't really look at the end of the year because, you know, I've already kind of seen some stuff where people was like 2016 was a bitch. Can't wait for it to be over. I've seen stuff where people like 2016 is amazing. I think every day that you get to do what you want to do is amazing. That's just how I look at it. That's why I don't get kind of freaked out by holidays. But due to a higher level of social intelligence, I don't go around shitting on people's time off. I just kind of keep it to myself and internal chuckles. Uh, here comes the layoffs. Oh, yeah. that's. Oh, here's something else that's way off topic. HUD is going to cut um, hundreds of millions of dollars. They've changed the rules. It used to be, you know, for your real estate people, it used to be that if uh, you had kids, they had to have a separate bedroom. Not, not anymore. Uh, you're going to see a lot of people really, really hurt with this incoming administration. I mean, if you can't see from the uh, pics of the cabinet, and I'm not going to get political. I'm just putting it out there that when you build a business model based upon someone else paying you due to rules and regulations versus you going out in the marketplace and really winning, no, at some point that shit's going to change. So just for you real estate folks who got Section 8, um, you're going to have to start renting the real runners. <laughs> People will pay the ooh, will pay the full thing. Alicia, Merry Christmas. This year in reviews on the web, big time. Mommy motivations. Yep, 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 yep. Warren Buffett says, "The more you earn, the more the more you said. The more you earn, the more you earn." I'm going to say you meant to say, "The more you learn, the more you earn." Okay, let's 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 break that down. Cause that's a real good example. And thanks for bringing that up. Um, Buffett says the more that you learn, the more that you earn. So this is how some people interpret that. Ooh, let me pull on my phone. Hold on a minute. And all right, boom. I'm going to make sure that's my audible account, right? So somebody will listen to that and they will listen to, a business book every week, which is good. It's good. It's not bad. Now, here's the rest of the thing that is not in that statement, because that's where many people will stop. They will become what I call data zombies. Read every book, know every, no, no uh, Slack, lean startups. They know all of these methodologies, but they don't have a business for some reason. Now, my thing uh, going against the buff is the more that you do and learn, the more that you will earn. Because if just reading books made people rich, how many folks know a bookworm in your life? You got a kid or somebody that just loves to read. And they're fucking poor as church mice. That's the, that's the whole thing. Your education does not equal your income, your experience. Experience only comes from doing. So if you, and I've actually said this, uh, on the channel many different ways. I said, the more that I fuck up, the more money I make. 
I've said that several times because fucking up means creating experiences. The more experiences you have, the easier it is to connect dots, connect dots, make money. So that's the thing. I don't know because I don't know what the buff said. And also with the buff, and this is why you have to do your research on people. A lot of the shit that he denounces right now is the same shit he did to make most of his money. Read his biographies, read what he used to do when he was a wild motherfucker. <laughs> you, you got, I mean, Bill Gates is known for reading biographies. <clears throat> biographies is typically where the real truth is on how they did stuff. Being on Trump is harmless. Those in his cabinet are dangerous for both parties. He is bringing in like, you know, the 12 horsemen. I mean, these guys have some serious ass records, but the whole thing is they can only do so much. Big short, I lost my business in the last year. He was like, Jesus, it's rough when you have someone solid in your life because a lot of people in your life are not solid. So... I think Trump will do a great job for business owners. Uh, once again, I'll add more to that. I think Trump will do, will benefit people who understand business. And what I mean by that, like, I'll just put it out. I mean, like, the whole thing is, you know, Trump won, how you can protect yourself. That video should make like 20 G's. Trump has made me money because I have used his bullshit to make money. So if you understand business, yeah. You will be good. But here's the thing. If you understand business, it doesn't matter who is in office. You're going to make money. It doesn't really matter. Pick one. Bubble, bubble the bubbles. Michael Jackson's chip could have been in office. I still was going to make money. It doesn't really matter because here's how policy and stuff works. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, we're all over the place. Primary market. Primary market is you go to the grocery store, you go to Target. Secondary market, resale market. <clears throat> Actually, hold on. Manufacturing, that's a market. Wholesalers, that's a market. Primary market, that's a market. Then you go to the secondary market, which is when people sell stuff, or resellers of primary markets. Then there's the black market, and then there's the illegal market. The black market is selling stuff they shouldn't be selling because they don't have licenses. And then there's the illegal market, prostitution, weed, drugs. All of these markets work together. So government policy does not impact secondary, third, and black markets, which make up a huge part of the economy. So they only mess with a small part of primary markets. So that's why I say it doesn't really matter who's in office, because if you know the game, you know how things work. They really can't mess with you unless you're in the business and they make a law saying you can't have that business. Yeah, then, yeah, they got you. Let's see. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, so true on Buffett biographies. Thank you. I never would have thought of that. Yeah, you ever watch like, uh, National Geographic or one of those shows and they just go through this person's life like you're like that mother that person was a motherfucker uh, you used to start to learn so much about people Barbers are far more important than goofy self-help books during the swamp that's funny thanks G had a killer year my YouTube channel finally kicked off and my business is starting supplies in bulk to reseller and military congratulations dude I, I told you you could do it I told you you could do it I, I, f I feel like I could say I knew him when. And I also told him he was going to be a millionaire. Bubbles 2020. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's up, hey God? Uh, when you run a 28th, a pack eventually, the Alpha Challenge would come in fighting for Congress and President. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be in bananas. Izzy, you're right. You can either stand by the sidelines or watch it get in the game. Yep. Do you think... Uh, I'll let you finish that. What do you think about the new VAT tax? Uh, depending upon your business model, how you're situated, it could hit you. It may not. It just really depends. Chris, 
here in Houston, the Latinos aren't worried at all. Not really. I uh, appreciate that, uh, DB. I really do. If you don't try, you never succeed. True. Uh, brave bulwark. Do you think Trump's tariffs may get people's jobs, but then the cost of everything goes up, so no net improvement? Uh, no. This is what I think is going to happen. Here's the thing that's missing from the conversation. Let's ask ourselves, why aren't so many people working? Going back to your education does not equal your income. First of all, the same reason we don't have horse and buggies. It's the same reason, you know the boarding houses at the turn of the century were common. It was nothing strange for you to move into a town, live in a boarding house, pay weekly rent because most people were poor and it was firmly understood everybody did not have the ability to pay for a house or an apartment. And it was very common for a man and woman to get married and live with one of them's parents while they get their money together for a house. So with culture changing, each wave of technology increases opportunities for a certain group of people and it reduces opportunities for the status quo the way things used to be, right? Well. We got something new here. We have an emerging super class of people who are getting uber wealthy with one tenth of the workforce or one fifth of the workforce. Here's an example. And look this up. Don't take my word for it. Delta, 80, 90,000 employees, market cap. That's the how much the company's worth it is about 40 billion. Uber, 6,000 employees, market cap of a 60 billion. So, Uber is worth 20 billion more and has 120 for the workforce. So what's really removing these jobs is technology automation. Now, if he can save a few jobs or keeping people from going offshore, okay, that solves some problems, but here's another thing. Everyone in the rest of the world is catching up with us. Standards of living are going up. So they don't necessarily have to sell here. G has a lot of uh, heavy um, capital investments in Brazil. They make these big earth moving trucks because the you know, company's business entity is in Brazil. Money is paid to Brazil. And, you know, they probably got it set up where that's owned by a parent company in Ireland. So that's not going to change. And if you create a company in another country and you're properly documented, it becomes real hard to track you. And as an American citizen, you should, if you make any income in anywhere around the world, you should report it, right? But if you have a company that's making money in another country selling to people who are not Americans, it gets a little different. So long story short, the root cause of why so many people don't have jobs is not being addressed. So if you don't address the root cause, you're going to get like Band-Aids, you're going to get feel good stuff. You're going to get what, you know, doctors call management of chronic pain or manage of chronic illness, but you're not going to solve the problem and the problem is going to continue to grow. So short word. Nope. <laughs> I don't think so at all. Let's see. What do you think of Martin Shirko, the guy? Uh, he's an asshole. He's a narcissistic asshole that wants a lot of attention. I wouldn't be surprised if he's part uh, psychopath. He just has this need to be to get attention. Uh, those Latinos in Austin, Texas, ain't worried either way. They own homes, whole shopping products, whole shopping plazas. Once again, a lot of Latinos operate in those other markets, not doing illegal shit. And to be real clear, I'm not saying they're doing illegal shit. But I know because I used to occupy a secondary market and I know how this stuff goes. There's, there's so much money that it happening off the books is ridiculous. Uh, Thomas, we still have a major pension crisis brewing. I agree. Uh, many people aren't working because they don't like certain jobs. There's like 2,800 jobs in Austin. A bunch are 10 to 13 hour jobs, though. All right, here, here's the thing. Unless you have a STEM education or you're an entrepreneur or some kind of creative genius or you just do something very special, the, skip, the jobs only require 10 to $13 an hour type work. 
regardless of your credentialing. Your credentialing does like, oh, well, shit, this job only pays 10 bucks, but because you've got a PhD, we're going to make your pay 50 bucks per hour. Not. That's where people go wrong because understand you went to college. You were chugging Red Bull on those finals, Mountain Dew, not sleeping, eating pizza, working your ass off, and you did it. You graduated with that 3.9, and 4.0. You had an internship. You did everything that you were supposed to do. You got out of college, and then you moved back into the real world. And shit didn't happen like you thought it should happen. You didn't get that job. You're doing the same job that you were doing in high school for a little bit more money. Only difference is now you've got a $600 to $1,300 a month student loan payment, which is taking most of the money that you are making from that job. You didn't need a degree to have. So I understand the anger and understand the entitlement. But see, marketplaces are like the jungle. If that antelope can outrun that lion, the antelope lives another day. If the antelope can't outrun that lion, he's dinner. And I'm going to give you some examples of how you think the same way. It's just the, the circumstances have to be more favorable for you. Big stores going out of business, right? And there's all these big signs, right? We're going out of business. We're going out of business. 90% off, 50% off, free stuff, right? Parking lots packed. For you to get that deal, people lost their jobs. Someone had to file bankruptcy. A lot of bad stuff happened. Did you care? Lion? As you ate that antelope? Did you care that the antelope had a family? Husband, father, mother, children? Did you care as you ate that hind part? Chump? Did you care? You didn't even think about it. <laughs> you didn't even think about it. All you like, This was $2,000 I got today for $250. I saved 80%. That's it. That's how marketplaces work. <laughs> That's how marketplaces work. And anybody wants to dispute that, go ahead. I know I, I've been in it too long. So that's why we're not going to, they're not coming back. Yep, that was coming in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, up to the 70s. Douglas knows this history. Houses came in big time with the post-war, World War II GI Bill, GI mortgages. I talked about that in uh, the fake-ass middle class. Did that video a few weeks ago. Let's see. Happy holidays. I'm saying 100. What's up? Uh, brave boy, good observations. It seems like we're going back to the little house on the prairie lifestyles with iPhone, small house, multiple generations, two to three part time jobs per person. I call it the return of the Waltons. I've actually played the theme music because we're not going back there. We're there. 40, 30 something to 40 percent. Either way, is more than a third of the country's population of millennials still live with their parents. And these are the same parents who are now having an agent parent, aging parent, like you said. Multiple generations living on the same roof, not because they like each other. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Mary. No, it's because they have no choice. We're there. And what's going to happen is this is going to spread and spread and spread. And what's funny, you're going to have the uber rich or the uber well-to-do live in a three to four or 6,000 square foot house, one or two people. And you're going to have four to 12 people living in 1,500 square feet. It's crazy. There's a lot of money there in those trends. Uh, Chris, yeah, Trump's family benefit from a lot from the GI Bill. So did the Kennedys. Um, like I said, am I a personal fan of Donald Trump? Mm -mm. I think he's a narcissist and some other things I'm not going to get into. But with that said, there's a few things I know because I've researched to do. He don't sleep much. He works his ass off. I can't take that away from him because I don't like certain aspects about him. He don't sleep much. He works his ass off. And he's successful. I have to give props where props are due. And that's kind of one of the reasons that your education does not equal your income, your experience does. Trump got a lot of experience from Fred Trump, his father. He got the game. He got to sit in on meetings. He got to talk to big weeds. He was Fred's boy. 
Um, it's just opened up a lot of doors. Mommy Motivations, Erica Williams. Yes, people have a big problem with earning less money than they did in the past until they're faced with taking that shit job and becoming homeless. Real talk from Mommy, Motiv Mommy Motivations. I'm saying 100. Love your videos. They're great. Please continue to make them. Well, thanks for the props. I appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Uh, Chris Monroe, I was the one that won your 10 storage auction books. I remember you. Do you think we're heading into hyperinflation? Yes. I think we're at the point where artificially reduced or held down mortgage rates are going to disappear because they have to. Yep. <laughs> Got sued for that stuff too, Douglas. Brave bulwark. Do you think comp why do you think companies grow beyond their ability to sustain? Do you have a golden rule of what when to expand and how much? Okay, great question. We live in a world where if you're on Facebook, you see this build a company, sell it. Uh, there's this whole notion of going from nothing, building a 10 million, 20 million, 50 million, 100 million dollar company, right? Get it to a certain valuation and flip it to somebody, take that money, retire, and do whatever the hell you want to. Right. So a lot of this, as you said, um, growing beyond their, their capabilities is driven by I'm in a hurry to get rich so I can get out so I don't have to do this shit. Now, I'll give you a case study of Waffle House. Waffle House started the 50s, I believe. I have to look that up, but I studied it. And they had just a few locations for a decade. What they did is worked out every little issue, every little problem. And then once they had their system down, that's when they grew. Waffle House is a privately owned company. You can buy their stocks. One of the reasons I studied them years ago, I used to live in an apartment and the guy that moved, used to live there, he was a Waffle House employee. And in my mailbox, I got his stock certificate. So I had to, you know, track him down and give him his stuff back. And then, you know, we just started talking and then that got me to researching the company, uh, 100% organically funded. It's a billion dollar company because they grew within reason after fixing issues. Uh, going back to what you said, a lot of these companies grow and they don't fix their issues. Like, you know, take my, take my company, I, I've started over. Um, this was starting off as purely a hustle. My goal was make 50 Gs a year, then get a big writing contract. Then your education does not equal your income, your experience does. I got an experience on how the publishing industry worked and I was doing better financially on my own. They offered me five G's for my first book. Let me tell you how you get a publishing royalties. You get a third upon signing of the contract. You get a third upon the, the submission of the publication and you get the last part when the book's published, which could take anywhere from six months to two years. Oh yeah. Once they buy that book, you can't do shit else with it. It was making more than they offered me per month. It made no sense for me to sign that publishing contract. The uh, next one was 10, once again, due to the same stuff. It made no sense. But once again, I knew how to make money. I knew how to run businesses. So I wasn't afraid. And also, I just have this thing where I don't give a fuck what you think about me. Because I have friends like, oh, God, you've been more legit. You should have took that deal. Uh, someone put this on Facebook. <clears throat> um would you rather spend a year with Warren Buffett and Bill Gates or get 10 million cash? It was a no brainer for me. Give me the 10 billion. I mean the 10 million. And it was just like, Oh, you know, all of this knowledge. And I was, and I started poking holes. Both of those people have people who work for them decades who are not billionaires. Some of them aren't millionaires. And it was like, Hey, well, people who work for them, I said, Oh, your question was, cause he started moving the goalposts was if you hang out with them for a year, I can't think of anyone who spends more time with these people than employees and personal servants. And they didn't come rich. So you don't get rich just by hanging out with somebody. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> and I would take the 10 million liquid and one lump sum. You know what that can be done with that? <sighs> I just tingle at the thought. And then we kind of went back and forth and everybody just got up all up on this knowledge. Uh, Warren made his money in a way that we can't make money anymore. Bill Gates made his money by putting out an inferior product, getting sued, 
dealing with all kinds of stuff. And we were at the point in history where we're adopting computers. That's God. <laughs> so he, he didn't, I'm not going to say they got lucky. That's unfair and that's wrong. They worked really hard in the right areas at the right time. Me, I raised my paw. Now you. Even <laughs> if it froze. Okay, still moving. All right, I'll give you numbers. 2009 was like the least profitable year. My books, my YouTube channel, my blog, none of that stuff would have happened without the TV shows. I have no problem telling anybody that. It was a typical event. I had a 14 month head start. So when everybody started looking for storage wars, auction hunters, they found me. I was the only one with a blog. I was the only one with a how to book. Was it luck? No. All right, let's see. All right, it blanked out. Just checking. Was it luck? Mm -mm. I worked hard. I prepared myself. And here's something else. And I urge you guys to do this. The harder you work, the luckier you'll become. You'll be just like opportunity stuff. You'll start meeting people. It's just amazing how that happens. It's just amazing. So let's see what's in here. Oh, survival of the fittest. Pretty much. That's where we are. People don't want to call it that. Any more college loans equal modern slavery. I agree. You can't bankrupt. You can never get rid of them. Will this cause a revolution? Uh, Thomas J., we've already had a revolution. For you guys, we're already in a civil war. Everyone's like, you know, the, the, the Trump election and if some happens to him, we're already in a civil war. It's already here. This war isn't being fought with bullets and guns and tanks and soldiers. It's being fought with ideals and propaganda. We're already at war. There is no coming war. We're knee deep in it. When you have people going out yelling at folks, I voted for Trump and I'm going to do something nasty to you. That, my friends, is civil war. <laughs> We're there already. Uh, so, yeah, the revolution's already on the way. All in the family, meathead, you know it. Uh, Queens, New York, Trump senior. Yeah, they built a lot of public housing. I know folks right here in Austin buying homes, running out all the rooms because it's the norm. Two good guys going in to buy one house. Any thoughts on when the pension bubble will employ Dallas is in deep trouble with 30 to 50 percent of retirees in the area getting near shafted? What would be their reaction? Well, let's look at who these people are. Who's going to get shafted? Elderly people who did their part, worked for their companies and retired. What kind of power do they have? What can they do? Old people, elderly people are the most vulnerable people in our society next to babies. They have no power. A lot of them don't have the health for a vigorous fight. They're just going to get fucked. That's what's going to happen. Waffle House opened in 1955, George. I knew it was something like that. <laughs> Morning Blue, Dale GC giving them game. I'm telling you, this stuff is easy. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I one, let's be real. I understand because I used to be in that position. I worked real hard. I played the ball of rules. I, I never got in trouble. I was salesman of the month and my ass still got laid off. It didn't matter if I did the right thing because the system wasn't designed for me to win. And when I had that break and I realized that, I started playing a different game. The system isn't designed for you to win playing the game the way that you're taught to play the game. And this isn't going out and being illegal. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. You need to put yourself in the owner's seat. You need to put yourself in the position of authority. You need to put yourself in a position where you run some shit, you have some power, you have some control. Even if it's, I would rather be the big fish in a small ass lake than one of the fish in the big ocean. That's just me. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Uh... Douglas. 
Terry McVillian waited in hell, took her initial 10K advance, and flipped it into immediately buying more of her own books. Uh, that was a common tactic where you would buy a bunch of books. Because see, this is how, let me tell you, you know, Douglas is dropping a little game. Guess how you hit the New York Times bestseller list? It's the number of books that are pre, that are bought on order. So you always see these authors, right, saying, hey, buy my book, pre-buy my book, right? So they have this number that 500,000 units are pre-sold. Instant bestseller. Now, here's the other little secret that no one tells you. A lot of those books are remandered. And what's remandered is they go, they're shipped to Barnes and Nobles or Amazon, wherever. And the ones don't sell, they destroy them. So, and they don't go back and correct the math. Learned that a long time ago. Henry Lewis, I thought you were off this weekend. Happy New Year's. Oh, here's something else. If you want to fuck with people on Facebook, start putting in Happy New Year's because then it makes it explode and you see all these little fireworks and shit. I, I was actually fucking with somebody and that happened. I said, like, oh, well. So, yeah, just go Happy New Year's all over Facebook and it'll be like pop, pop, pop. <clears throat> I am off, man. I don't have my drink here, but I was drinking. I was talking shit, so I'm talking more. Uh, brave getting heavy preaching today. Bring some holiday fun too. What's the most recent boo boo the fool story? I really don't have any. I've really worked hard to change my circle, and I've got a good group of friends. Uh, I, I am loved. I am. Uh, I am very fortunate. So I don't really have any boo boo the fool stories. I really don't. Morning Blue being early is the biggest advantage. Tom Lopez was an early adopter to Google AdWords, Facebook ads. Dude said he was buying insurance clicks at 30 to 60 cents. Insane. And what Morning Blue is talking about is true because now you're trying to buy that shit. It's two, three, four, five, six, ten, twenty dollars per click. <laughs> Eddie Mo, you're ahead of your time. Really? I didn't know that. Actually, I did because uh, I was talking with a friend today about the degree myth video. I had people on Facebook unfriend me when I posted that. Now, nobody gets mad because the truth is out. So maybe I am. Uh, Douglas, that's good to know because I didn't really get that deep. But once again, the other day I was talking about storefront preaching where I said, talk to two people, three people, whatever. Tyler Perry built his business the same way. Uh, his first few shows, nobody showed up. But he continued to show up, if you know what I mean. Um, money away is so true. I still work at an insurance company, and seniors are being taken advantage of and exploited legally, so it's sad. I think with some of these people moving into the multiple generations where these seniors will have access to someone helping with this stuff will be helpful for those people who have those type of relationships. Ty Lopez is not smart with his money, so why would you buy his BS? Okay, Big Short, I'm going to tell you something. Ty Lopez does about $8 million a month. Him blowing money on Ferraris, he ain't even spending a month's income. All right, someone who spends $16 million on ads and continues to spend. The way internet marketing works, you can't spend like that unless you're getting a return. When you do the math on this website, uh, he'll get, because I did the math, and he's probably, like I said, he's doing maybe 8 to $10 million per month. I don't care if you like him or not. That's fucking strong. 8 to $10 million a month with, you know, he's got a team. Uh, I, know, I know one of his guys. He's got like 12 people working for him. All that stuff, he's, he hammers his market. 10 to 21-year-olds. What do you care about? between the ages of 10 and 20. Pussy, hot cars, money. And that's what he gives them. That's what he gives them. That's all you, that's, that's what those guys, they're not being motivated to get money to build a legacy and have a family. Fuck that. They're getting money so they can get a nice Ferrari and fuck a skinny bitch. That's what they want. And he gives it to them and they pay him. Yeah, pensions are gone. Great title. It makes me feel great about spending all that money. <laughs> That's funny. It is better to start a practical service type business. Yes. They say that Kardashian did that to be on the best sellers list. They all do that. 
They all do that. See, this is the thing. Typically, you're being sold half of the game or you're being intentionally misled because once I figured out what it took to become a bestseller, a lot of people, they haven't sold that many books and that many people haven't read it. But when you can put that little note, New York Times bestseller, that gives you credibility to be on television, that gives you show, that just gives you more money. Uh, the guy who wrote Chicken Soup of the Soul, he didn't really, Chicken Soup for the Soul, he didn't make that much money on the book, but he made millions from speaking. The, the publishing game is really, really different. Ty is brilliant. Anyone with means to spend on ads alone is brilliant. Pretty much. Pretty much. Let's see. Uh, I don't know about that. I haven't studied. And one of the things is there's so much that's going on that until we get into really the first two years, we're not going to know. Uh, yep, I actually know the folks with Mike Williams, uh, uh, Mike Chang. He doesn't actually, he's not part of that group anymore. Uh, the older guy, I think he's always owned it. He was, Mike Chang was, he was the first. No worries, Big Short. It's just, see, one of the things here that I do is tell you stuff because I have no affiliations. I have no sponsors. I sell my own stuff. So, some of the stuff I say steps on people's toes. Some of the stuff I say offend people. And some of the things I say means that certain people will not work with me in the future. That's the reality of it. But hey, nothing like being your own damn man. It's a great thing. Even if you're in the Santa hat. I pop my collar to the Latinos. Uh, some of the open minds, Google America, the food stamp nation. We have worse bread lines than any point in history. What's up, Richard? Merry Christmas. See, this is the thing. When you really look at the reality of the situation and you get away from Facebook, like, give you an example. People were losing their minds when Trump won. And the next day, I went out in public and I went to this bakery, one of my favorite bakeries, and this little white Jewish girl opened up the door. Hey, how you, have a great day. And I have not been treated any fucking differently than I did before he was born. I mean, before he was, before he, he won. Not at all. Not at all. Now, I understand that's my experience. And, I've, and there's some shit that's been clear bullshit. Like this one guy, you know, there was nigger written on this car, but it was only written on the windows, not on the paint. A racist doesn't care about your paint job. So clearly he did that shit for attention. So after about six months to a year, we'll have a better read on this stuff. But if you focus on your success, if you focus on your life, you focus on your family, you focus on your happiness, guess what? That's what you're going to get, what you focus on. So I don't really pay a lot of attention to that stuff. And I absolutely refuse to talk about politics because people are so rooted in where they are that even if you prevent, give them evidence, they're not going to cross that line. Oh, they pulled another one out. I think that, because um, they've been doing that a lot this year, I think it's going to be probably Patriots and maybe the Falcons, which is strange as fuck. So we'll see. Bulwark makes me think of what GC said. Fits. I mean, seriously, you look at the numbers. For every Walmart in America, there are 1,458 people who need EBTA. Damn. Now, let's talk about that. Those people are going to get punched in the face when these changes occur. Let's see. Asians or uh, Latinos ask me about politics, what blacks and whites do speaks volumes. If you got your health, you got your wealth. Pretty much. Well, here's the thing. Like, you go to West Virginia, which is a state that's damn near in abject poverty. The whole state. They don't have any professional teams. Virginia Tech, uh, Old Dominion, Virginia. Those are their professional teams. Someone like Alabama with Alabama and Auburn. 
you have people who were in certain economic old school manufacturing, coal mining, steel manufacturing because of the natural resources in those areas. And hey, shit else there. We have a lot of people in our country we, who have no purpose. They're just here. And that's scary because a person without purpose is dangerous. It's really, really dangerous. So it gets to be very, very interesting. But I just kind of did this thing today. Like, like I said, I'm just messing around. I'm getting ready to roll out. Is when I see people stressing out over their purported education, but you've been out of school 15 years and you've had nothing more than a $9 to $15 per hour job that should tell you something. Then you'll see someone like me with, I dropped out my junior year and I've been owning companies since 2000. It's not your education, it's your experience because I can, I was in the gym talking to a guy who's into business process and we had like an hour conversation in the gym because I knew what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> It, when you know your stuff, when you know it, you get people just to get in like that. You got to work on your experience. Oh, Cleveland won again. I'm kind of happy for the folks of Cleveland because that was like really deplorable. Uh, on the plus side, the so Trump era is like they'd be great for entrepreneurs. You go from making 50 million to making 52 million. Okay. Uh, maybe if that. Henry Lewis, I've been thinking about writing an ebook on pros and cons of trucking. I have 11 years' experience in driving in all 48 states. 20, 25 page, nothing too big. Do you have any suggestions on that market? I would stay, I mean, this just made me an honest, do what you want. I would stay away from that. Look at the people who get into truck driving. If you're going to try to make money teaching people, training people, you need to have a school. You need to be somewhere in that pipe chain. There, there's so many guys on YouTube who drop how to become a trucker, what company to work from. It's just out there. That's that's not a good vertical. I mean, you could probably write the book and make some sales, but it's not a good vertical. It's not a lot of people who are going to pay you to learn how to drive a truck when they can go work for this company. We will teach them to do it for free, and they sign a two or three year contract. I'm big sure to do focus my life on business like you. I don't care about what people what people think. If I did, I would not have what I have worked for. All my wealth is from experience only within the last six years. These times due to automation, you would be able, and this is no bullshit, you would be able to start from scratch and make a million dollars in a year to the leverage of the internet and technology. Brave. From West Virginia, you're preaching to, man, I've been there. I was just like, damn, this is like Alabama. <laughs> last one leaving, turn off the lights, damn. They have armed guards to the chain of grocery store here in Maryland with self-checkout. See, I would have never have known that if I wasn't doing these streams. That is like, it's like Germany back in the day. Like when you went to Germany in the airport, they had machine guns. They didn't have like a pistol. They had machine guns. Uh, the problem with natural resources that are subject to diminishing returns. Yep. Is there any money in exposing the secrets of an industry healthcare? Mm, maybe, maybe not. Here's the thing. You can expose secrets. You can prove it. But if you can't get a lot of media attention, not a lot's going to happen. Shoe 458, you're here today. Wow, I really need to start a small business. It's a, be it's a beautiful thing. George Travers, I agree. I worked with a guy who had a master's degree from Yale University. We were paid the same amount. Broderick, my family is accountants and doctors. They have money, but they're so unhappy except for the weekends. They're unhappy. This is what scares me away from that life. Yeah, it could be um, pretty rough. Uh, the Hector, I think the Trump president could be the best thing for America. Once again, people realize, once people realize the president is, is not going to save them, they'll have to save themselves. Possibly. A lot of people have come from that angle. Will they get rid of AdSense in 2017? Nope. Mm -mm. Ain't going nowhere, bro. Nowhere. 
But you, you have so many people who get wrapped up in their education, they get wrapped up in their degrees, and honestly, you worked hard for that stuff. I mean, you sacrificed maybe your mom, your parents, maybe grandma gave you some money to get your get that degree, and now you have it, and it's not performing like you think it should. And the reason's simple: there's no experience in it. I guarantee you, if you do this, pick something that a lot of people need and become a savant. And a savant is like a genius or just really good at it and you will make money. No degree. I had someone argue with me and I need to remind them that um, it was just like, I can't do this, uh, you know, without a degree. And I said, like, you get the experience, you do whatever. Person went in and got the experience, got the job. And they said, normally we don't hire people with degrees, but we like what you did. The experience is everything. Uh, I, healthcare, I can tell you this, grandma, grandpa, anybody on Medicare is going to have a reduction in benefits. If they're kicking people out of housing, they're going to fuck with healthcare too. It's going to be bad, I think. Uh, Kirk, a lot of entrepreneurs who kind of walk that rope. Um, they've learned to take care of themselves. I mean, seriously, you got people back in the day of the plague, polio, who lived to be 90 years old. Uh, Jack LaLanne, he, he worked out. This, this dude walked like 10 miles a day. Lived to be like 90-something. So I think wellness in terms of meditation, better eating, better dieting, things like that, yeah, I think that's going to be huge. I think that's going to be huge. Let's see, where are we here on this Christmas special? Oh, okay. Like I said, I'm just chilling. I'm just here. So I'm going to put this out before I bounce. If you made it this far to the end, be sure to subscribe, like, share this video with someone you care about. And this is the offer. 